will talk about things like attack on civilization as President Bush did on that occasion. They should also consider the ways in which civilization attacks itself from within uh, through policy decisions, through promotion of certain technologies, through promotion of a certain kind of economic structure. Uh, in all those things, choices are being made, uh, which actually uh, destroy civilization from within like termites. You know, so whether it's greed or fear or impatience, I mean, all these things are, uh, you know, the forces which destroy civilization. Nations are basically organizations of collective selfishness. We hide our selfishness at an individual level by... Uh, you know, allowing others to be greedy too, if I may paraphrase. Okay. And our collective greed for wealth and power takes the form of a modern nation. That's what a modern nation is. Tagore is a far-sighted man and he's able to see where all this is going to lead. And which is why he continues to become ever more relevant now. Because a lot of the things which he anticipates in that period 100 years ago are now becoming obvious even to the person on the street. Gore was deeply distrustful of the resentment in people's hearts. And he never believed that you can create a good society if you act from resentment. You, know? you have to transcend it somewhere internally and rise to a level where some love appears and which can help you uh, face the, uh, the consequences. The difference between tradition and modernity in this sense is, uh, is stated very well by a philosopher like uh, Raymond Paniker. He says that traditionally man lived in the cosmos. Modern man lives in history. You know? So now what that means is that with pre-modern technology, uh, your relationship to nature and the cosmos is very real. It's a very everyday thing. You're not cut off. You're not alienated. You're not estranged. You know that not only do you have individual limits vis-a-vis -vis a storm or a cyclone or an earthquake, but the culture, the community, people as a whole, everybody's limited. Human beings are limited. Most violence in the world is happening out of Anger, hatred, resentment, all sorts of feelings in the human heart we don't want to face. We are too chicken to face those things. We lack courage. Whoever has his finger on the trigger is the coward and whoever faces the barrel is the man of courage. The world understands it exactly the other way around. Now, people will immediately get defensive and say, well, humanity has always been uh, violent towards nature, you know, whether it's the Mahabharata or you know, some other epic. I mean, you just have to read the Greek epics and burning of the forest by so many cultures and so on. Uh, and all that may be true. But I think that the means that modernity has created for the uh, disposal of nature and converting nature first into matter and matter into resource, you know, uh, which is the progress of science and its marriage with modern economics, that leads you into this crisis straight away. In many ways, ecosophy chimes with ahimsa because of this, because without that ahimsa, without that inner peace, you know, you won't be able to protect uh, yourself, let alone nature.